to Utah's Great Salt Lake is under threat. To understand why Great Salt Lake hit a new historic environmental nuclear bomb in the East. Great Salt Lake hit a new historic bomb in the East. To address it, but also said governor. This is the Great Salt Lake, and it's drying up. So much so that its volume is now down at least 67% from the levels seen when pioneers first settled in the valley surrounding its banks. In the 1980s, the lake's surface area was over 3,300 square miles. Now it's under 1,000 square miles. The lake is at record low levels, exposing large plains of toxic dust and putting the lives of over 2 million people who live on its shores in danger. But why? There are two main reasons we can blame on the lake's worrying decline. Climate change and direct human interference. We'll start with the latter. A staggering amount of water from the mountain runoff streams and creeks that feed the lake is being diverted to instead feed the sprawl of Salt Lake City. Utah is the fastest growing state in America, and Salt Lake City is its capital and its anchor. The entire Salt Lake City metropolitan area has a population of over 1.2 million people, an increase of over 800,000 since 1960. That population increases to over 2 million if you include the nearby cities of Ogden and Provo. While this growth has resulted in an economic boom for the region and Salt Lake City's transformation into a major hub of the western United States, it has also put a ton of stress on the nature that surrounds it. All of those people living in and around Salt Lake City need water to drink, so they look to the pure fresh water of the lake's tributary streams. But as time has gone on, the city has been taking more and more water from these streams, depleting the amount of water the Great Salt Lake can take in. To add insult to injury, Salt Lake City and the state of Utah as a whole have had a history of poor water management. In 2015, a state audit found that Utah had the highest water use of all 50 states. This is a result of several factors. One such factor is the use of unmetered secondary water systems. These systems were inspired by irrigation systems used in the agricultural industry, but were instead used by thousands of Utahns to water and maintain their lawns. These secondary systems took water straight out of rivers and streams and pumped it directly to residents, saving them large sums of money, as using the regular water they received in their homes was a lot more expensive. Since the water being pumped through these secondary systems was untreated and still full of sediments, dirt, and debris, it was impossible to install meters on the systems. This meant that the users of these systems never quite knew how much water they had used, or if their systems were leaking or damaged. Since water providers were clueless as well as to how much water customers were receiving through these secondary systems due to the lack of meters, they instituted a flat rate that today averages about $250 per customer. Regardless of how much or how little water the customers used, they still had to pay this amount. This system gave no incentive to customers to conserve their water, and lacked any accountability for overusage. People were simply able to use as much water as they wanted without paying any more than they did before. Utahns use about 60% of their water annually outdoors, meaning that in areas where secondary systems were used, they were used often. Technology over the years has advanced, and meters have been created that have enabled providers to install them on some secondary systems, but only a fraction of the total amount of secondary systems have them installed. The state government has realized the importance of this situation, though. In 2022, House Bill 242 passed through the Utah House and Senate. The bill promises to cover 70% of the cost to install a meter on secondary systems over the next two years. That percentage gradually declines on an annual basis, incentivizing users of secondary systems to act fast. The bill is backed by a massive amount of money, over $200 million from the American Rescue Plan Act alone. With that being said, however, it's still an uphill battle before this problem is completely solved. There are 221,000 unmetered secondary water connections in the state of Utah, and it's estimated that it would cost nearly $400 million to meter all of those connections by 2030. The state government also has passed numerous other acts aiming to help save and conserve water around the state, with a focus on the Great Salt Lake. These include HB 121, which focuses on water conservation modifications. It puts aside $5 million to cover up to 50% of costs if homeowners are aiming to xeriscape their lawns in an effort to eliminate the need for water and irrigation. HB 429 focuses on ensuring coordination and communication between water agencies by creating state agencies to better manage the Great Salt Lake's water. Policies on the local level has also been changed to better reflect the changing times. 
Local regulations that previously encouraged heavy water consumption have been scaled back or gotten rid of entirely. These efforts should make a difference in the long term, but there is still another hill to cross. Climate change. The southwestern North American mega drought has raged on across the desert southwest for over 20 years now. The Colorado River, Lake Mead, and countless other bodies of water across the region have suffered as a result of it, and the Great Salt Lake is no exception. Increased evaporation of the lake water and the snow that feeds its tributaries has only made things worse, and the lake is already seeing some of these effects. As mentioned previously, the lake now no longer covers over 1,000 square miles, recently falling below that number. Forty years ago, that statistic likely would have seemed impossible to most people. Back in the 80s, the lake was at its peak, reaching over 3,000 square miles and supporting a very diverse and healthy ecosystem. That is no longer the case. In the dry, barren wasteland that once was the lake bed, deposits of arsenic and other toxic heavy metals sit. These metals have been produced over the years through a combination of natural processes and the heavy industrial presence along the lake shore. Large windstorms often carry through the region, picking up these toxic particles and sending them flying in a cloud of dust towards populated areas on the lake shore, where they reach the lungs of millions of people. As a result of the lake drying up, it's also at risk of becoming too salty. If the lake's salt concentration were to rise to around 17%, much of the algae that grows in the water would not be able to survive. This could lead to a mass die-off of the flies and shrimp that survive off of it, which in turn could result in the disruption of the tens of millions of birds that visit the lake every year. It would also likely result in a total collapse of the local ecosystem. Thankfully, as noted previously, the state and local governments are taking steps to improve the health of the lake, but they need to act fast. Demand is set to exceed supply by 2040. The clock is ticking. Will they be able to save the salt lake before it's too late? Only time will tell.